No matter what process, no matter what material, cracks are almost always a rejectable defect. Whether they're transverse, longitudinal, hot, cold, crater cracks. What exactly does this all mean and how do I avoid them? Got another repair that just limped into the shop. We've got a fish cleaning table made out of 100% aluminum. Now it's got one leg that has a catastrophic failure and is broken completely off right in the middle of the weld. Almost all these feet have a crack running through them and even some other spots have some cracks too. There are some obvious details on why they cracked in the first place and then there's gonna be some issues as far as getting these things repaired and making sure they don't crack again. Let's just lay our little slug down real quick. This will be our weld bead. That'll be the start of it. Here are stacked little ripples. Nice weld, nice weld, nice slug with our nice crater right here. So types of cracks, you have your transverses, A type of crack. Now your transverse crack is a crack that happens across the weld. So that's going to be your transverse crack. Then you have your longitudinal, longitudinal. Did no. Don't spell check me on none of that. I have a computer for that these days, but that's going to be along the length of the weld itself. Okay, then you'll have some crater cracking. Let's put crater over where the crater is. Crater cracks. Now these occur in the crater, as you would have guessed. Usually kind of starfishing out a little bit like that. And then you'll have a toe crack. No, not a crack like your old crusty toes, but you guessed it, just a crack on the toe of the weld. Then you have a heat affected zone type of crack. That's a Z. Your heat affected zone, which is outside the weld bead. And that'll crack usually, again, in the heat affected zone. Whole different slew of problems when that type of stuff happens. Then you have your under bead crack, which is actually <laughs> underneath that root in the root pass itself all kinds of crazy different cracks and where they can occur but two different ways they occur is usually either hot or cold cracking now this can happen a number of different ways it could be a prep issue it could be a preheating or a post weld heat treatment issue it could be a filler metal issue it could be a travel speed problem a whole number of things can result in either a cold or a hot crack the biggest thing as far as when they happen kind of gives you an idea of how they happen. A hot crack is when that weld metal is cooling, whereas the cold cracking, the weld has solidified, has made an actual weld, and sometimes you might see a little crack start to form right after it. Now, to give myself a little credit, I am a certified welding inspector. In inspecting these welds, I can see a lot of cracking. And you don't have to be an inspector to see that. They're clear as day. There's cracks right in the material. Aluminum's kind of nice to look at because you can see exactly where all these cracks are. Most of them that I'm seeing are these longitudinal cracks that are going around these fillet welds at the base. These are what is meant to be repaired, but the customer also said, while you're at it, there's some other things that are cracked. Could you give it a look over once over and fix anything that you see? I got one foot that may have a crack, but it might be on the actual toe of that weld. I'll do a little bit of PT testing on that one to figure it out. There was some sort of stresses that happened for all these things to crack. Something had to happen. The hot cracking did happen in the corners up here because it looks like to me they used zero filler metal in these corners to weld aluminum. Now, if you weld enough aluminum, some alloys can do that, but there's very few. So if you to just put in the aluminum weld autogenous, autogenistically, then it will probably hot crack. You can see it cracking almost right after. Some of this angle iron is lifted up where these tacks have cracked. Most of the welds that do have filler aren't cracked except these. Maybe they're underfilled. We want a little bit more of a convexity to our weld than a concavity as far as a fillet weld goes, especially with aluminum. And if you don't use the right filler metal for the aluminum, could also pose another reason why it could be cracking. When it comes to aluminum, filler metal selection is uh, kind of important. It's a tricky metal, it's a little finicky, especially if you don't know what metal this actually is, whether it be a 3000 series, a 6000 series, a 5000 series, 3003, it could be 5356, it could be a number of things. Usually where I start is either using a 5356 filler metal or a 4043 filler metal. You can even tell the difference if you listen closely here. You see how one has a little bit more ting to it? That's gonna be our 4000 series, 4043, and this is actually gonna be, I think I got some 5554? 5554, yeah. Basically a lot the similarities of 5356 except for it being able to work at higher temperatures where 5356 doesn't do well at 
and 4043 does. The weldability is a little bit better in 4043 because of the silicon content, but the tensile strength isn't as high compared to this one. So being that this is sitting on a dock, there's no heat gonna be put into it except for the ambient temperature that it's gonna be on. And I'm thinking that the dock, being that it's a dock and probably getting bumped against and woods and pieces are moving and kind of constantly added stress, I think that's what helped ripped it out with the concave welds. I think we need a 5,000 series filler metal with a little bit more meat on everything that has a crack. I think once we remove what cracks are there, clean it up, put that on there, weld it up, we'll be good to go. Before we set the machine up, we've gotta get everything prepped. I went ahead and took my die grinder with these burr bits. They don't look like a carbide burr bit. They got these wider swoops in them so that they hopefully don't get gummed up when working on softer metals like aluminum or brass or copper like that. So we put those on there. We took it pretty generously to try to remove a lot of the weld metal that's already there and try to get down to the actual depth of these cracks that we're finding. After that, we used a stainless steel wire brush to try to remove some of the oxidation. After the brush, we hit it with the acetone. Again, aluminum is really finicky and it really likes to be welded clean. This stuff is heavily oxidized. It's been sitting out in the weather for sure. We're gonna start with the two feet, right? Uh, I didn't get remove all the weld metal, just what I saw as far as the cracks. The one that didn't have a crack in it, we went and PT tested, sprayed on the penetrant and we let that dwell for a while. Then we sprayed on the developer to see if there was any cracks. And I didn't see anything in, as far as a crack on that fourth leg, except for right on the crater that looked like some porosity or something. So we'll make sure that we grind that out and just patch it up. Other than that, we're gonna go back and acetone and brush everything before welding, but let's get this machine set up so we can weld it. You know, I got that pony, that stallion alert, powered up, the Typhoon 230, man. Big fan of this machine. We're gonna run on the AC TIG features today setting everything up with our start amps at 20. The upslope, we're using a foot pedal, so we're not gonna need it. We got our foot pedal, 332 tungsten, high frequency start. Pulse is off right now. EP is at about 50 as far as the percentage that we're gonna spend. EN amperage is at 200. We're gonna use quite a lot of beans to get this puddle started. We're gonna have the advanced square wave and a trapezoid wave as far as our waveforms. The AC frequency at 190, balance at 50, because we've got some pretty dirty material and I don't typically like going much higher than that. This EP percentage keeps the cleaning, but without as much as the, it just helps kind of fine tune that. We got our 100% argon on and we've got us, uh, looks like we've got a number eight cup lamular flow. Got our tungsten E3 uh, balled up and ready to weld. Now, even at 200 amps, I actually had to turn this up to 220 amps at this point. Aluminum has a really high thermal expansion. It takes a lot of amps to get going, get hot. So as you can see, I'm just sitting here in one spot trying to get a puddle started. We chose to use this filler metal because of its higher manganese content, which adds some tensile strength compared to the silicon that the 4000 series typically has. I think this is gonna help being that it's sitting on a dock. Even the littlest crack needs to get fixed because cracks, all they do is grow. That's why they're so bad and you gotta get rid of them. That little one's gone, let's get to these big ones. So again, I left, ground off most everything I could as far as weld reinforcement. I left only a little bit of attack on the backside. This does take a second. This takes some time. Sometimes preheat is nice to have, but we didn't quite have it. So I ended up just taking my torch and just running it from the back side to the front side of this joint, just trying to use the arc as some sort of heat to get put into the aluminum and even pull some of the trash to the surface. Uh, but just trying to preheat the joint any way I can so that by the time that I am getting started, I can actually get a decent puddle on here because Lord knows we don't want a cold puddle when it comes to TIG welding aluminum. Otherwise it just turns into a clumped up bird poop. So now that we have some heat into it, we can start feeding some metal very slow at this point, even at 220 amps, still trying to get heat into it. Now I'm able to start feeding a little bit of filler metal in. Each dab just takes a little bit more. We wanna fill in a little bit more than we did on the welds that were previously here, just so we didn't have that concave weld reinforcement. We had that convexity to the weld and it was plenty built up and we had plenty of weld on it. Now to get this old dog back to hunting, all I'm gonna do is just pull it right back into its crack line. And this joint hasn't been prepped or anything yet. Gotta line it up first. I'm gonna just try to do a fusion tack, which I'm pretty sure is gonna crack because of that whole hot cracking thing we talked about and how aluminum doesn't love to be autogenously TIG welded. Totally. 
do that if I had a piece of tip wire. Let's see if I can do this with two hands. Just put a little bit, put a little bit right there for me. Ha 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 ha, don't break, don't break, don't break. So they got a tack on there, we'll probably attack the other side and then we're gonna grind out all the bad so that we can weld it back together. The goal is to remove all the front half, weld the front half, and then remove all the back half, and then weld the back half. Whew, that's good for it. Tick torches don't like me. This one's still hot from the last weld we just did. Again, this is a 150, but it's doing okay. It's like not the worst. Come around here. Dripping bombs in my hood, I'm freaking sweating. Just so you guys know what we're up to. This was the one that was completely broken. We put a little tack on the back to hold everything. We ground down all that crack that you see there. We ground it out in this first half. Weld it all the way around from where we ground it out. And then we gotta get back into that weld and get some of that crack out. So this is completely crack free. You get this freaking noisemaker 5000 going again. Let's weld the rest of these pieces. And that's about wraps it up. We got all the cracks pretty much taken care of. And I'm not gonna say it was a prettier weld than the guy that did it before me, cause he had a pretty good hand, but the cracks are gone. I hope they hold up. I hope using that different wire and hopefully taking for some things into account that we've mitigated and removed all the cracks and hopefully they won't be coming back. Appreciate you guys all for watching. If you wanna see any other types of projects or repairs, man, let's put them in the comments. Let's hear about them. If you think that there's a better way or a step that I missed, cause I'm not perfect, I'd like to get a little bit better myself. Let me know, lay it on me, man. We'll see you guys on the next weld. Eat more, eat more, zork. Got what I was gonna say. Line! <laughs>